Hi, it's Les Iron. It's here again with a, another video tutorial. And we're just looking at this image here and we're going to analyze it with another one and see if you can tell the difference. So this is the first image and this one is the second. Now, I don't know about you, but there's very, 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 very slight difference in tone. Very, very slight. Nothing hardly. And you could probably adjust that slight difference between the two. So this one's got a little bit darker tone. This one's a little bit brighter. Um, this one may have slightly more noise in the background. And this one's got a smoother background. So what I can tell you is this one is the original image. So that was the original photo that I took and it was taken with a, um, a 1DX Mark II camera with a Sigma 150 600 millimeter lens, the contemporary model. And it's taken through my front window. So it's actually been taken through glass uh, with backlight as well. So not perfect conditions. So it hasn't come out too bad. It's sharp all the way through the bird I'm quite happy with it but I want to make it much more bigger now we're looking at this at the actual 100% resolution um, and it does look a little bit small on the screen the reason for that is because what you're looking at is a 4k monitor so actually it's it's not that small uh, if we look at the size so if we go to the image we go to the image size we can see that it's 2,455 2, pixels wide. Um, so it's quite good enough for printing, you know, good enough for quality for, for printing to a, a magazine, for instance. It's plenty big enough for that. However, let's look at the other image. So remember we're looking at this one, that's the original. We're looking at 100%. And now this one, let's zoom this to 100%. And you'll see that it is actually four times larger than the original. There's still plenty of detail in there. Remember, we're pixel peeping on that. So it's uh, that much larger, four times. So that's... We started off with a 600 millimeter lens, so let's double that. So if we double the 600, 1,200 millimeter lens, we double that, 2,400 millimeter lens. So that's the equivalent to a 2,400 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, um, which is some going. And if you look at that, the quality is fantastic. So how did we achieve this? Well, you can actually do it in Photoshop uh, and get reasonable results. But for the very best results, there's a program called Topaz AI um, Gigapixel. And AI is standing for Artificial Intelligence. And what it does, it recalculates the image. And there's been lots of this software about before, and I've never been overly impressed with it. But this software, plus... Uh, Photoshop's own version uh, of enlarging, which is Preserve Details 2, are both very good, but Gigapixel comes out the best. So this is 400% 400, 400 uh, larger than the original image. So the original image obviously is 100%, so that's four times larger. So how do we do it? Let's look at the program itself. So let's just close this and we go to the program. So Topaz AI Gigapixel it's called. I think the cost of this is about £80. So you can get it from the Topaz homepage. If you search on there for, for Gigapixel. It's a standalone application. Now I would like it to have been uh, within Photoshop as a plugin. 
but it doesn't work like that. It's a standalone application. So first of all, you have to look for the image. So you click basically here. You find the image, and this was the original image. And then this is basically what you've got on the right hand side. You've got enlarge by, you've got scale or by size. So at the moment you can see it's on 400%. And you've got reduce noise and blur. And you've got non, moderate and strong. Very basic controls, but it works well. You've got an output format. So you could output it as a JPEG, as a TIFF or a PNG. You can change the image quality on the JPEG part or, or whatever. You can select a color profile. It will convert the color profile if they, doesn't, if they don't match. So usually you want that on sRGB. I've got the other options there. So Profoto and so on, Adobe. But especially for internet use, uh, sRGB will give you the best color. The output name and location. So basically, I'm going to save it to the same location as I've got the file, and on the end of it, I'm going to put a file uh, suffix with output on the end of it. That is by default the selection, but you can put your own suffix on there or a prefix, so a name before the actual file name. Um, and the processing mode, I'm using GPU, so it's using the graphics processor. Uh, you can use this CPU if the GPU fails. I'm happy with my graphics processor's going to do the job, so that's fine. So the next important part is to click the open preview. And what we get is we can look at the, the zoom at 50% or 100%, 200%, and 400%. We can zoom in. And you can actually see the quality on the right is gigapixel and the original on the left hand side. Um, so if we look at 100%, we can see how much detail gigapixel is actually putting in there. And this is having been resized to 400%, as you can see. And it's always important when we select. Uh, the reduced noise and blur. On this one I've got it on strong. If we go down to this, sorry, if we go up to this little picture in the top left there, what I notice occasionally is you can get some banding right at the bottom of the image. Now there's a little bit actually on the original, but can you see this banding here? If we put it down to moderate, I think it looks worse. So We'll go with strong, but it's right at the very bottom of the image. You could probably crop that off. It doesn't usually appear anywhere else. It's usually at the bottom of the image. So that's something to look out for. If you selected none, um, so on the reduction, this is not so much on that, but there is a tiny bit on the original. I don't know where, where that's come from, actually, but... Uh, I'm going to go with strong, and for that tiny little bit there, I can get rid of that in Photoshop. Not that you'd probably notice anyway, because it's right on the very edge of the picture. But you can see the quality on the right hand side, much, much sharper than the original there. And then all you do is click start. Now, I'm going to put a different suffix on this because. Uh, I've already got one called output. So I'm just going to call this one test. So we're enlarging in it by four times, 400%. Um, let's have a look at 600, just for uh, just for a, a bit of a look and see what it comes out like. Let's look at the bottom of that image and see what that's like. It's right on the, the very edge there. It's not too bad at all, actually. Okay, let's have some fun. We'll go for 600. Now, when I do this, it can take quite some time, uh, depending on how fast your processor is on your PC and your graphics card. So, I've got quite a powerful machine. 
So you can see the blue bar going along there. So it's not doing too bad on this machine. But if you've got an older machine, it can take time. I'll probably skip this part, it takes a few seconds, and then we'll come back to when it's complete. Okay, so we're just getting to the end of that, it's just saving the file, and there we go. So the original was 2,455 pixels wide, and the new image is 14,730 pixels wide. So that is huge, absolutely huge. So let's Go into Photoshop now. It'll probably take a while to open it in Photoshop, um, but let's go into Photoshop. I'll just close this because it's going to use up tons of memory when I do open it. We'll go into Photoshop. Okay, so we're in Photoshop. Let's just open the file. And this is the one. And I've got a fast machine with lots of memory, uh, 32 gig of RAM. Uh, and it's taken a while to load, so <laughs> it's a big file. It might come up with an error about, yeah, it's going to come up with an error. Now, if you see this, don't panic. It's simply because you've added the file open before in Photoshop, the original. And then it just says the data appears to be damaged. And just click on OK, and it will it will load up. So there is the file. Now from there, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So let's double click the magnifying glass and go to 100%. Look at that. Look at the detail you've got. You know, such a large size. And the noise, we've got this little bit of bandina say at the bottom. Now you could actually crop that. It's worth thinking about if you if you're thinking of resizing. Sometimes it usually appears on the bottom there. And if it does, you can get rid of it in Photoshop. It doesn't actually feel where my name is, which is which is unusual. So I can just use the mixer tool and I could just brush and I can just brush that out. I'd actually use another process just to keep that uh, texture in there. But this is just a quick method. It smooths it a bit too much, but uh, this is just a test. I use something called FS2, which is a process of frequency separation that I use that would do this without removing the texture. <clears throat> so as I probably just easier to, to crop the bottom of the image that little bit. But when we think about the size of the image and the equivalent of that, so let's. Uh, my mathematics is terrible. <laughs> so we used a 600 millimeter lens on that. So 600 and 600, 1200. 1200 and 1200 will give us four, so that's 2400. Oh, you do the maths. <laughs> oh, it's a very big lens. Okay, huge. So that's what it's giving you the equivalent as. Maths is never more strong subject. That's why I stick to photography. It's for people with no brains. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So you can see the quality of that image at that size. So you can get super mega big lenses actually without the need to spend a lot of money. As long as you've got a good, reasonable photograph in the first instance and you're fairly close, then you can use this and uh, 
get some stunning some stunning enlargements but of course I've probably gone over the top in that it's very really rare you would want it that size you know it'd be a poster that would fill your wall if you printed that out you wouldn't need it that big for the majority of cases you're only going to be probably going double or you know not even four times in, in some instances so you can you know it's but it's showing you taking it to the extreme and showing you that you're still getting a, a good photo at that size so it's an incredible program and one every probably bird photographer should have under its belt um, if you're fairly serious about your, your photography and you need you know you know you've got that rare bird and it's just a little bit small and you want to make it bigger this is this is a, a very good way of doing that and keeping that detail okay so well, that gives you a little insight of Topaz AI Gigapixel and it's up to you whether you want to, to purchase it but I'm certainly happy I've got that it's made a big difference